Welcome back to the channel. So I'm gonna get started on framing the rest of these walls up. Some people have been wondering why, um, I guess they say that I'm basically building two buildings. Uh, my wife and I don't really look at it like that because um, I'm not putting a roof on, not putting siding on, I'm just throwing some walls up and then doing the insulation. So the only real thing that we're losing, I guess you'd say, is the framing the walls. So another reason we went with pouring a cement pad and putting a metal building in is we have these boulders all throughout our yard. And I know they don't look like much now, but if you clear the dirt away, you'll see that they're more like this. And there's another one over there by the tree. And there's some down in the woods. They're actually all throughout the woods. I don't know how well you can see them. And there's, there's a really big rock here that I actually got my jackhammer and tried busting out and I didn't really even make a dent in it. So I'd like to get them out, but I need a backhoe or something bigger. And the guy that dug our foundation for our addition, he actually was getting ready to give up because he, he brought a machine that was, it wasn't a mini, but it was, it was bigger than a mini, but he had a hard time at one point trying to get through the rock and he was ready to give up. So, so I was like, well, let me just get my jackhammer, see what I can do, and we worked it out. And another advantage of doing this this way is I got a building in a day. I've already done some maintenance on my cars, and if you've watched some of the other videos, you could see all the things that I've done in this garage already, which is why my garage looks like a five-year-old's bedroom. So when I tie into other walls, I like to keep my 16 inches on center. So I'll pull off from the previous stud and I'll come over to my next board, make my mark at 32 and then X ahead. So this will be where the stud goes. And I'm gonna put a stud right here at the end. And I know some people think that's kind of a waste or even when I was framing houses, they would want you to put this stud right here in the middle of two plates and it just didn't hold together very well. Um, I mean, it's not a big deal. You can do whatever you want, but I just find that it's better if you put another stud in here and just hack it together. Okay, I have my top and bottom plate laid out, and I'm going to start laying my studs in place. These are already cut to 111 inches. I'm going to put the crown going up, like I discussed in the first video. I just do that all the time just to stay consistent, and then what that will allow is your walls to kind of all bow the same, so you don't get a bunch of waves in your wall. It's just kind of like one big bow that nobody ever notices. So you see up at the top, there's a two by four nailed on top of the walls, making a double top plate. And you'll see here at the end that I've left about three and a half inches. What that does is ties all your walls together. So you run, whether you're building a shed or a house or whatever, whatever you're gonna build, you run that extra two by four across the top and you, you like overcross your walls so when you nail it all together, 
that stiffens up the top wall, but it also ties all your walls together. And when I put this little wall in, you'll see how I connect the board, let it run up three and a half inches past this wall at the top and then run across to the top of the wall. So to stiffen up this, this wall here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a 12 footer on top, nail it all together. So I left that top plate back a little bit because I'm gonna be framing in a little room. And so you wanna tie all your walls together. So when I tie in this wall, I wanna anchor that to the top, have that top plate overlap this top plate here, and I'll just put a little board in between. And there'll be the same thing here. I'll want that top plate on this corner to go in and tie to that wall. So I should have showed you this last time. I'm gonna put drywall on these two by fours. So I have to pad this out a little bit, basically put more boards in. A lot of guys, they'll take a two by four and they'll turn it sideways. And the reason I like doing that is because I have to insulate this, or I'm gonna insulate this, I want to. And it's gonna to be tougher with the insulation. So what I do is you have all these wonderful scraps of wood so what I do is just use all these little scraps. I know it's a little bit more time consuming. Maybe with the price of lumber, you could justify it, you know, using up these little scraps. And I just make a solid couple two by fours all the way up and just splice them together. You don't want any gaps because this is taking up the space of the insulation. So of course you wouldn't want to leave, you know, a few inches or even a little bit in there. You want to make sure the boards are as tight as possible. And just for good practice when you're framing, I would always stagger whatever you're trying to put together. So I'm not going to use these boards that are all pretty much cut to the same length. I'm going to start with this little piece and then work my way up and then I'll nail these on and it'll kind of stagger everything and tie everything together. Okay, so I have all this blocking put in, and you can see when I put my wall in here, I have a place to attach some drywall, and you use up some of your lumber. So the next time your wife's clipping coupons and saying that you spend too much money, you can just say, hey, I saved like $40 in lumber by using up these few pieces. I have my top and bottom plate laid out here. Maybe it's a little bit loud because of the rain. I don't know if you can hear that. But I'm gonna go ahead and lay this whole wall out 16 inches on center. This is just kind of more of the same old, same old like I did on the other wall. Frame it up, put it in place, nail them together just like I did this wall. And I have to remove each one of those braces. I'd like to only remove two or three of them at a time and then hurry and get them back together before I start on the next section. Don't know if it makes a difference or not. These buildings are still pretty rigid even without those. And in this corner, I'm not too worried about level left to right in this corner so much as I am this wall pushing in or out. So when I nail this wall to this face here, it may not line up exactly with this wall. I'm definitely going to level it up. I know this is pretty level already because it's leaning against the metal here, but how you don't have anything in this 
corner here to lean against, you definitely want to level it up. Okay, I'm going to start putting this wall together. And I took the top braces out for the section that I'm going to be starting, just a short 12 foot section of this wall. And then this is where I'm going to build my little office area. And I talked about the top plate earlier, and I'll show you how I'm going to tie in the walls to the office and to this other long wall. And I didn't put the top plate in over here while those braces were off. I kind of wish I would have, but I didn't know how the building was going to react with taking those braces off. Didn't really make that big of a difference. And so if you're thinking about maybe doing this in the future, as long as there isn't a lot of wind, I mean, there's no wind today. And even when it was a little bit windy, when I was doing this the first time, it didn't really affect anything. So you should be okay. Just take those off, stand up your wall, put your top plate on, do all your frame and put those on later. Okay, I'm going to lay out the walls for my little office here and I'm going to come out to this point here because there's going to be some shelving units and at the end I'm going to build a little room for my air compressor and if you've ever worked in a shop with an air compressor that's just out in the middle of the open, you know, of course you want to contain it. So this is called a framing square and you use these to lay out walls but what I do is I'll take the larger side along the wall that I'm going to go up against, make sure it it you know kind of follows the line. Wood isn't perfect, so sometimes you get a little bit squirrely, so make sure you get get this lined up kind of the way you want it. Okay, draw a line on the floor, and then you can take the larger edge. Just extend your line out. And then what I'm gonna do is put a little screw in here and I'll actually chalk these lines out. I'm gonna come out, it's gonna be 47 inches in all. So I'll just kind of follow my line. 47 inches. This is gonna be the outside of the wall. I'll do the same thing over here. Okay, I'll get the lines chalked out. So when I'm working by myself, I'll just put a screw in the wall here and hook my chalk line to it. And that'll follow the, the line that I made on the floor. It'll come out to my mark here and I put a screw in over there you probably can't see it and then I'll chalk that out and then this is going to be the outside of these walls okay the thing about this chalk is it comes in a lot of different colors uh, there's red orange this blue and you want to be careful which one to use because some of them are uh, almost permanent. If you use the red, they're used to go out and chalk lines for walls out in uh, houses when they build houses and that stuff will stand up to the rain and everything. So if you go put that somewhere on a floor where maybe you don't plan on doing anything else to the floor 
and you know like maybe down in a basement you go down and chalk it in red line's not coming off with this blue i usually use this blue because it's like a good medium to where it'll you can kind of brush it off like if you really get aggressive with it it'll come off and that's why i'm using the blue so my corner here is pretty plumb meaning it's straight up and down and i just have a couple boards holding it in place so it's against the metal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this first top plate to tie these two walls together. How I'm going to measure this is I'm going to go from that corner over to this line. And I'm getting 96 and 3 quarters. And so I'll cut a board that's 96 and 3 quarters. But remember that 3 and a half inches is going to hang over on the end to attach to the other wall. So we'll be three and a half inches short here, which when I built this wall, it'll allow me to tie it up at the top. Okay, I have my opening there that I'll accept that other 2x4 coming across to tie this wall in. And I'm going to start framing in this wall. Okay, same principle with this wall is with the corners. We need something to tie in this wall. So that's where I'm gonna go put the scrap lumber along this stud. Okay, I'm gonna frame up the other wall. This is gonna have a door in it, so this is really important. So everything still needs to be 16 inches on center. So what I would do, start with that. Okay. Now, I'm gonna come in to, uh, I'm gonna come in 30 inches, then I'm gonna have a doorway. So come in, your 30 inches, and this is where I wanna start the doorway opening. So I'm actually gonna go X behind, because this is actually going to be my opening here. So for a 36 inch door, which is what I'm gonna be putting in, you need a 38 inch opening. Cross, make a mark at 38. Now you're gonna want your X going on the other side because this whole thing is gonna be your opening. And then the rest of it can just be the wall. So now what you'll do is take your square, same thing. Keep in mind, you just put an X behind. So you want the X behind. So it matches. So all of this is all going to be open. This is all gonna be your doorway. And of course my pencil is writing on a pressure treated wood. Okay, X again. I'm not going to get really technical in what's going to go on here, but we're going to have something called jack studs. So what you're basically going to do is you're going to have two different, you're going to have two studs here next to each other. And there's going to be its own 
smaller stud, a jack stud or a cripple stud, I don't know, a lot of people call them different things, that'll come up and actually form your door frame. Then the one next to it is the one that'll actually go up to the ceiling. And then the X's that you put on here, these are actually gonna still be used because these are gonna be used when you, after the door frame is made, these are gonna have little two by fours in them that will go up to the ceiling. So as you bring your drywall across, your drywall will, will be cut around the opening, but you still have to have places to anchor the drywall above the door. And that's what you'll use these X's for. Okay, so this next part's kind of tricky. Um, you really gotta have some attention to detail when you do this stuff. And so our opening is going to be 38 by the, the actual rough opening, they call it, where you're actually gonna put your door in. It's gonna be 38 by 82. But remember, you can't start 82 here because this part's gonna get cut out. And you'll see that later on. What I'm gonna do is pull off from the very bottom because that's what our door's gonna sit on is the very bottom. Come up and make mark it 82 and then put an X. Same thing, 82, put an X. And then what we're going to use is our jack studs that are going to go from the inside of the plate up to our 82 mark. So we're going to cut two boards at 70 and a half. And then I'll cut a 30. Let me make sure I got this right. I tell you wrong. I'm going to cut a board at 41 to go across the top. And so that'll be our 38 inch opening plus an inch and a half stud on each side will give us our 41. So there'll be a 41 inch board that'll go across the top, and then that forms our frame where our door is going to sit. Okay, I'm going to lay out the jack studs for my door. Same thing, you want to crown these as well. Okay, so we just have to lay out our studs across here, and then we're gonna continue our 16 inches on center. So I'm just gonna pull off from this board here, 32 here, 16, 48. And then those match up with these X's here. And then I'll put a couple in here as well. So I'm going to need five of these at 29 inches. If you find that the boards aren't lining up just right, you can always use a little pry bar or something. Make sure that they get into the right position because you want all the boards to be pretty flat when you go to attach your drywall or uh, plywood or whatever you're putting onto it. So I quickly put the top plates on everywhere. Everything's tied together. I got my galvanized bracing back on. So I've been super busy lately for probably the past eight weeks working in uh, my full-time job as well as, I don't know, 30, 40 hours a week between travel and, and doing construction for my side business. So I've been ridiculously busy. So for those of you that you know, I've wondered why don't I just stick build this thing? 
Well, this is about where I'd be in the last six weeks. It's been really slow going. So hope I can kind of pick up the pace and get this done. So it's also New Year's 2021. So I have to finish framing, get ready to go over to a party over my in-laws. So I hate making gingerbread houses. I think it's pretty dumb, but my wife finally convinced me about eight years ago to build one. So I caved trying to be a good husband. So I made a gingerbread house. Then my father-in-law and I were trying to figure out how we're gonna get rid of them. So we decided we're gonna shoot him with airsoft rifles. He's got some of these um, AR-15 type airsoft rifles, fire, I don't know, a couple hundred BBs a minute. So we started shooting them up that first New Year's Eve and it just kind of became a tradition. I don't really consider myself a redneck, but I always end up doing rednecky stuff. So that's where I'm headed right now with my wife and daughter. We're gonna head over to my in-laws, uh, my nieces, nephews, uh, they've made gingerbread houses and and also my mother and father-in-law. So we're gonna go over there and shoot them up. So I'll give you a little bit of footage of that.